Right boys, so um, day two for the Silver Program. Um, this is the week three and week four um, lift. So you'll be doing this one for two weeks, as I've explained in the day one um, video. Um, you will add on a fourth set to this in week four, but today, um, for the first time in week three, you are just doing three sets of each exercise. Um, so, um, out of your warm up, get it done, do that mobility stuff. You guys need it, it is hugely beneficial. Um, you should be doing extra mobility work, whether that's before the session, after the session, at night, fit it in. Now, you've, at the moment, you've got time to do so. Um, so, really recommend you doing that. Um, you will thank me for it later. Cool, so A1, A2, A3 um, are our velocity lifts. Um, we have pretty much three new exercises to go through, so I'll try and get through those um, pretty quickly and give you a clear explanation so you can get stuck in straight away. Cool, A1, tuck jumps. Um, pretty common exercise. I want you to do this again. We're looking for uh, really strong stiff ankles to generate that vertical force. Drive up with your knees, so I want your knees to go above parallel. Um, and try and remain relatively um, centered in one spot when you do this. Um, the tendency might be to go a little bit left to right or forward to back. Try and maintain good vertical um, application of force and stay in that same position. Cool. So tuck jumps, we're going to do six. I want you to go hands on hips for this one um, and go straight up and down. Cool. So it might take one set to get a feel for that. Um, but as you warm into that, really go up nice and high. Good leg drive, get your knees nice and high and get that good contact time um, on the ground. So I want you to do six of those. Um, that's A1. Um, A2 is a plyometric push-up. So virtually what you might know as a clap push-up without the clapping. Let's adjust this for a second. Um, so good strong push-up. And drive up and then catch that's one second one two so I want you to almost reset do one apply that force get off the ground catch it like we would for a jump um, on the landing and then reset and go again if you find you don't have the upper body strength or you can't get off the ground um, that's okay even if it's just a small little um, lift that's cool but if you are really struggling just go to your knees so go for a push up from your knees and then still apply that force from that position, um, that press up position, to get that upper body plyometric exercise done. So that is A2, I want you to do six of those again. Um, and A3. So we're still doing that Superman back extension like we've had in your other programs. Um, this time we're adding an overhead press. So what that looks like is, you do your Superman, then you're gonna do a shoulder press up and back and down. Back extension, elbows go in, overhead press, and back down. So I do my back extension, and I'm in this position. Elbows come down, level with my shoulders, and then I squeeze them back um, up to my ears, just like a shoulder press or military press. Um, that is A3, and I want you to do six of those. So week three, three sets of that. If you're doing this as part of your week um, four, uh, day two this will be four sets um, just on that I have posted your day one um, so make sure you go back and do that um, it is it was on a teachers only day initially but that ex that session is in there so go and do it you should be getting these two lifts done at a bare minimum um, so do the session today uh, if it's your first for week three and then get that day one session done uh, later in the week Right, moving on. So B1, um, we have got a press up, but we're gonna control both the eccentric and isometric components of that lift, or portions of that lift. Um, there is 12 repetitions. We're gonna go, what have I written? So it's got a three second eccentric, as well as a two second pause. So we've got a five second, um, pretty much, down and hold, so three seconds down, two seconds hold, and then we're back up as we normally would. I want you to go just a conventional press up for this one. Um, so that's hand spacing, it's just wider than shoulder. Um, you might like to go a little bit wider or a little bit more narrow, but we're not going to the point where we've gone super wide 
or more of a military, we are in the conventional press up position. So how does that look? So three seconds, so one, two, three, hold for one, two, and then back up. So one, two, three, one, two, and back up. Um, there is 12 repetitions in there. Um, if you get to 12 and that's way too easy, you need to, you feel like you wanna add in a couple more, go for gold, get hit 14, 15 repetitions, adjust that to your individual needs. Um, that is, it is quite hard, so you might start off thinking that that's quite easy and you're gonna bang out 12 quite comfortably, but you might find that fatigue catches up with you pretty quickly. The key is that you maintain that good three seconds down, don't speed through the count, hold for two, again, don't speed through the count, and then back up. Good, solid, strong press-ups for 12 repetitions, that's what you should be looking to achieve um, in B1. B2, side prone. With an addition, so here's my side prone. I've got um, my hand on hip, so that's what our typical position would look like. But this time I'm gonna reach under, so under my armpit, twist and reach to the ceiling. Under my armpit, twist and reach. Under my armpit, twist and reach. Still keep your hips high, they don't sag down to go under and then back up as I reach. They stay in that position, under, control, and open up. Notice that my hips didn't twist, they didn't drop or sag. I used my core to hold myself in that position. Um, and you're gonna do 12 repetitions on each side. So obviously, under and reach is one, um, and build up to 12. That is B2. Um, B3, so I've got an uns unsupported bent over row, so you will need some sort of weight. Again, as I've said in other videos, you will not need too much, but use what you've got around the house. Um, for this exercise, so we've also we're also going to play with the isometric and eccentric components of this lift, exactly the same as we had with the press ups. So there's no confusion there because you've had a practice at that one. Here's my kettlebell. I'm going to use for my unsupported row. So with my unsupported row, I'm going to have an athletic stance, so one foot in front of the other. So when I'm using my right hand for the row, my left foot's going to be in front of my right. Um, I'm going to bend slightly at that knee. I don't mind if you have your hand bracing on your hip, but I'm gonna bend over, my back's gonna be flat, my core and glutes are engaged, and I'm gonna do my row from this position. Um, again, so it's gonna be three seconds down, so one, two, three, row to the top, and then I'm gonna hold in that isometric for two. So one, two, one, two, three, and back up. One, two, one, two, three, and back up. Again, you shouldn't be moving all over the show because your core should be helping to keep you stable as well as your glutes. Um, and that's why you won't need um, a huge or heavy weight to complete this exercise um, because it is challenging, particularly with that athletic stance. So when I would go to my left hand, I would change my stance. My right foot would be in the front. My left leg would be behind it. Again, nice control. Good core, core is gonna go a long way into achieving this exercise. So make sure you do that, remind yourself. And again, three, cent, three seconds for the eccentric component of the lift, the lowering, um, we're gonna hold up top in the isometric part for two, and then we're gonna go back up just for one like we normally would um, to return to that starting position or that isometric position. You're gonna do 12 on each side there. So that is your B1, B2, B3. Uh, quick recap, the press up, three seconds down, two seconds hold, one second back up for 12 at least, add in if you want. Um, the side prone with the reach, keeping my hips square still and not letting them sag or push to the ceiling. Um, staying nice and stable and strong there. And then the unsupported row, so the athletic stance or the split stance. Um, hand on hip, core engaged. I've got my two second ISO hold at the top three second eccentric lowering portion of the lift and then I'm just back up for one as we typically would. 12, 12 and 12. That is the B series. Right, so C series. Um, we're still playing around with those slowing down of those various portions of the exercise. Um, we're moving into a lower body um, part or part of the program here. So we're gonna do a split squat. 
just with a two second isometric hold. So one foot in front of the other. Make sure we've got a good wide stance for this. Oh, get my balance. Hands on hips. If you want to hold a small weight um, during this, you can. Hold it in a goblet position, so to your chest. Um, otherwise, hands on hips. I'm just going to go down like I normally would for a split squat, straight down. I'm going to hold for one, two, then I'm going straight back up. Um, it's not a lunge, so it's not dynamic. I'm not moving forward with these legs or pushing back with this back leg. I've got one foot from the other. I'm going, oh, find my balance first. I'm going down, hold for one, two, and straight back up. My feet don't go back to the starting position. They stay there, and I go straight into my second repetition. One, two, back up. Down, hold for one, two, back up. Do your right leg, then your left leg, or your left leg first, and then your right leg. Don't alternate. Stay on one, then move on to the next. Um, 12 on each side. Dead bug. We've covered this in class, but some of you might need a gentle reminder, and it might take um, a bit of thinking before it clicks over and you go back into the automatic stage of learning, and you know, okay, that's how I do it. So it is alternate arm leg. Some of you um, will struggle with the coordination of this until you remember how to do it. So I just move one arm, one leg, and they are alternate in nature. So by moving my right arm, my left leg goes out flat to touch the floor, and then back to the middle. Then I change. Left arm, right leg, out, back to the middle, and I go through and accumulate my reps like that. Uh, we're not marching with both hands, not doing a running man. The non-moving limbs stay absolutely still. So they stay in the middle, then I return, and then they go. Then I return to the start, and change. Um, cool, you should remember that, that should be fine. Um, we're gonna do an RDL, a two, it's not single leg, so it's bilateral. Um, you can use a weight for this. You will not need um, a heavy implement for this uh, because we're going to play with the way we do the lift again. So we're going to do our hinge, our hip hinge, or our RDL. I've got my kettlebell. I'm going to go five seconds down. So one, two, three, four, five, and then three seconds up. Two, three. So one, two, three, four. Five, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. So we're really slowing down that eccentric portion of the lift. Eccentric um, hamstring strength is going to be your one of your best defenses against hamstring strains. Um, for those of you who have to run fast or move quickly in your sport, which is the majority. Um, you are prone to hamstring strains. They are really niggly injuries because once you have them, the likelihood of them reoccurring is very common. Um, but doing eccentric strength like that, lowering down and actually putting the hamstring under strain as it lengthens, going down slowly for your five seconds, that is really good defense for potential injury. So... Do that, you won't need lots of weight because you are lowering it down for that length of time. That five seconds is a long time. So the tension um, will be created by your body weight, but adding a little bit of weight, um, whether that's five kilos worth, would be really good for injury prevention. Cool, so that's C-series covered. So split squat, um, just remember split squat is not a lunge, so we're not lunging forward or pushing back. We're simply getting our stance and we're going straight up and down. We've got that two second isometric hold at the bottom of the lift. Dead bug, alternate arm, leg, and then the bilateral RDL, um, which I just demoed then the five seconds down, three seconds up. Um, C-series, done, three sets, 12, 12, and 12. Right, and so we've got a bit of a leg burner or quad burner or hip flexor burner to finish. Typically these, um, these volume or muscle endurance exercises I've added in to finish off your workouts have been upper body dominant. This one is a lower body dominant. It is a simple body weight squat finisher for 60 repetitions. When you do this, I want 60 full depth squat. That doesn't mean 
bum to ground, it just means legs below parallel. Um, and you should be able to bang out 60 without stopping. If you have to take a break, take a break, but don't be soft on yourself. This is a challenge, so challenge yourself to get those 60 reps done. Um, I just will give you a quick demo just in case you're unsure. So hands can be out in front. I want you to go low so my th thighs are parallel to the floor and I'm standing back up and bang them out. So I'm not cutting short, they're not half reps. I'm going down full depth and back up. Bang out 60, the session done. That's day two. Um, reminder that this is your day two session for week four as well. However, you'll be adding four sets into the A, B, and C series. Cool.